What's up, Nubby Taunts? It's Jess. Welcome back to Cystic Arts. And today's video is a special request from my lovely friend Piper. Thank you so much. I'm sorry it's taken me a little while to get to it. Um, I've just been doing a lot of the holiday videos. It's actually Christmas Eve as I'm filming this, so that's why everything is still decorated. Um, I'm not totally sure when this video is going to come out, but if you're wondering, like, why is it all decorated for the holidays when I'm not talking about holiday things? That's why. So, um, Piper wanted to know um, what kind of stuff you would need if you want to follow along with one of my painting tutorials or you're just getting started with painting. And so, great question. And, um, so here I'm going to try to answer some of those. Um, so I'm going to talk about just acrylic paint in this video. Um, I personally have always only used acrylic paint. Um, there are pros and cons to it. Um, I'm going to do a separate video about the differences between acrylic and oil, but um, so, and then I will do a, a video just like this one, but regarding oil painting and what you need to get started. So. Um, for acrylic painting, obviously, you're going to need some paint, um, and I've used a lot of different brands, <coughs> pardon, um, and you can really do some beautiful work with extremely cheap paints, like these, um, Apple Barrel and Craftsmart paints are both, like, under a dollar unless you get like think the multi-surface ones are a little more expensive but like they're around a dollar or less for a bottle of these and they work just fine are they the best no not in my personal opinion but if you are not sure that this is for you um that would probably be a place where i would start that's what i started using um and they're also just good for like other types of crafts too. Like I will be using them all the time on this channel and not just to do paintings. So if you're interested in some other things, they're good to have around. They come in a huge array of colors um, and you can get them or different brands, but like similar, similar formulation and consistency at pretty much any craft or paint supply store um, and Walmart has them. Um, so you can get started with that. You are also going to need something to paint on, of course. And I actually started by painting rocks. This is one I did just recently. I've been painting for three or four years now, and I still will occasionally just paint a rock. If I come across a rock that's nice and smooth, and maybe it looks like I could do something with it, I'll pick it up and I'll paint with it. We'll be doing a video about how to paint on rocks coming up, um, but I've basically figured like, oh, rocks are free and so I can practice on them and not have to spend money on canvases and things like that. So that's what I, that's where I started and it actually gave me a really good feel for um, the consistency of the paints and how well they covered and things like that. So you could definitely do that just whenever you find a nice smooth rock, grab it up. And rock painting is actually um, very trendy and very popular. Um, it has been for a few years now. Um, of course, you're going to need um, something to put your paints on, like a palette of some kind. You can definitely get um, all different kinds of palettes at any um, craft or hobby store, um, but I typically will use just paper plates. Um, they work really great. Um, you can use it and reuse it and reuse it until it's just absolutely covered in paint. Um, I get a lot of life out of just one regular old paper plate. You can use them for a very long time and it works just fine. Um, you are going to, if, if you do decide you don't want to do rocks and you just want to go to canvases, you have a couple different options. Pretty much everybody is familiar with a, these are called a stretched canvas. Um, it is a sheet of canvas. Um, they usually come already primed. 
um, and ready to go so you don't have to worry about priming them. They are, if you look at the back, they are stretched over and stapled to a frame of wood. They smell really good when you first unwrap them. This one is already unwrapped, so it's kind of lost its smell, but it smells like of pine and just, I, I love the smell of unwrapping a fresh canvas. Um, so they come in lots of different sizes, different shapes, different dimensions. Um, Michael's is always having a sale on canvases. It seems like you can't walk in that store and they're not having some kind of deal on canvases. So you could definitely, you know, pick up some small ones, maybe like five by seven or eight by 10, um, just to kind of get a feel for things and see how you like it. Um, this one is just happens to be a 12 by 12. It was, I, this is the smallest one I have right now. So it'd just be easy to um, see for you guys on camera, but there's also another option. These are still in the package. These are called um, canvas boards. And see, there's five in this pack. And you can see that they're very thin. And they're basically um, just glued onto a like sturdy piece of cardboard. They um, tend to be a lot cheaper than a regular canvas, and so that can save you a little bit of money as well by still letting you get a feel for what it's like to paint on an actual canvas. Um, they're not good for everything, um, and I will probably do a whole separate video going over the um, pros and cons of using these. I do still buy these though, um, just to practice on if I'm like trying to learn a new technique and get a feel for how it's gonna work and that way I'm not like potentially wasting a canvas that costs me more money. So these are definitely good to have around um, and uh, are cheaper than your, your typical canvas. So they're also a good place for people who are just getting started. And of course you're going to need some brushes and it's kind of hard for me to say, oh, like you should get these brushes because any artist that paints that you talk to is going to say like, oh, my favorite brand is this and or my favorite brand is that. Everybody has their brushes that they prefer. Some people prefer natural hair. Some people prefer synthetic hair. Some people like stiff brushes. Some people like soft brushes. It really just kind of depends on personal preference. So what I'm going to do is just show you, um, these brushes these are my personal favorite but down below i'm going to um put in some links for some variety packs of different brushes um that will have different textures different fibers different thicknesses some are firm some are soft um and I, I do feel like if you're just getting started getting a variety pack is a good way to go because it's going to help you determine what you really like um, but these are my personal favorite. Um, these are handmade modern brushes. This set has um, 24 brushes in it, and it also has a canvas, um, like an apron kind of thing with pockets that you can put the brushes in. I will open it and show you guys. But I did want to show you the package. Like, this is all the brushes that you get. Lots of different sizes, different shapes. Um, just a really wonderful pack of brushes, and this is $20 at Target. That is a very good price, because if you have ever looked at um, an art supply store of any kind, and you go through and you look at brushes, um, the really, there's like some really expensive brushes, and I'm not, you know, trying to bash on them or anything, um, and if you prefer using those brushes for whatever reason, by all means, that's up to you. But, um, you know, some of those brushes can get really up there in price, like $20, $30 I've seen for like a single brush. And if you're just getting started, that's ridiculous. Don't spend that kind of money um, if you're just getting um, started with painting. So let me open this really quick and I can show you more in detail. Assuming I can open it. There we go. They also have um, smaller sets at Target as well. They have like, I think they have like a 10 piece set and then like a five piece set. Um, so you can get those as well. 
so if I open up the little canvas pouch that it comes in, this is what it looks like. Um, actually, it's not an apron, um, it, but it has this on it, so you could like potentially like hang it up on a wall or whatever. Um, has that, um, but. I like this um, canvas bag situation too because if you ever wanted to go like out somewhere and paint, if you want to go out to, you know, go paint some nature or whatever, you could just um, take this, fold it up, tie it around, tie it around to keep it closed, and then you have a nice small portable package of brushes that you can take out with you someplace. And these brushes are just so great i love them they're um very soft hair let me take one out here you can tell they're not like super stiff it bends very easily i personally like soft brushes um and these i've i can kind of abuse my brushes a little bit um and then they get all frayed and kind of funky um these ones the ones that i ha i've had let's see these, this was, I bought one of the smaller sets of my very first brushes um, because they were a good price and I do, I think it was like a five or eight piece set, something like that. And I still have every single one of those brushes um, and I still use them. But you have all different kinds of shapes. You have um, round brushes like this. They, um, a lot of times the round brushes will come with this plastic cover thing to help keep the shape nice. Um, so you've got different sizes of the round brush. You've got a couple different fan brushes. You've got um, some very like small detailing brushes. Um, I just think this is a really great set for an amazing price. And um, with all the different shapes and sizes of brushes, you can really get a feel for what each type of brush does, what kind of paint stroke you're going to get, how it feels, all of that. So this will be linked down below and I'll also link to like the smaller sets if you want to start with one of those. So like I said, yeah, these are my favorite. Love them to death, but I will also link to some variety packs um, so that you can get a feel for some different textures and things if you want to do that. Um, now I'm going to kind of, oh, Actually, before I move on to stuff that it would be nice to have but not necessary, you want something to cover your work surface with. Um, and I have found that um, puppy potty pads work really great. Um, <clears throat> they are plastic on the bottom so that, um, you know, any paint or anything that you dribble on there, it's not going to seep through onto your whatever your work surface is, your table or whatever. Um, and the they're absorbent so if you like spill a little something on there um it's gonna suck it up and i also can get use just one i keep using it for a long time um this is a package of five puppy pads that i got at the dollar store this will probably last me a year like so don't, there's no need to like run to the pet store and get like a pack of like 50 puppy pads. Um, just get the smallest one you can find. Like I said, I got these at the dollar store. Um, if you are worried about your floors, potentially spilling something, um, you can use like a shower curtain or um, some, one of those like plastic tablecloths that you can get for like birthday parties and stuff. And I like those because they're nice and big. Um, and you can also get those at the dollar store and it'll work great. The last thing you're going to definitely need is some kind of container for water for rinsing your brushes. This is just an old jar. You can see it's well loved. Um, I think there was a candle in this once upon a time, but it just become had become my, my paint jar. So like something like this would work, a mason jar, even just like a solo cup is fine. You just need something to put water in for rinsing. Um, okay, now I'm going to move on to the stuff that's nice to have, but not necessary. Um, first thing is going to be palette knives. These come in lots of different shapes. You can get plastic ones, you can get metal ones. These are nice for mixing paint colors together. Um, 
or and you can actually paint with them too if you've ever seen a Bob Ross video he uses a palette knife quite a bit um so these are these are nice to have but again not necessary these little cheap plastic ones again dollar store like the dollar store is really upping their arts and crafts game lately I've noticed it's kind of nice um so yeah nice not necessary um then uh an easel you guys are probably wondering like oh why wasn't an easel in my list of essentials because you really don't need it like i said it was it's nice um because then at least your your work is sitting upright in front of you and you don't have to like lean over a table or something um but again not necessarily necessary i did not have an easel for a long time um and then uh i finally was like okay that i'm really getting serious about this i better get an easel um, so I really like mine. It wasn't super expensive and it collapses down to, um, be portable. So that's nice. It doesn't take up a lot of space. So I'll put a link down below to my easel and then some other types if you just want to check them out. And I'll probably do a whole separate video just on easels alone and the different kinds and advantages to them and everything. Um, but you could actually get this canvas again. You could actually like have a canvas and this is what I did for the longest time and I would like set it on the table and then I would have something kind of behind it to like prop it up so it was a little bit tilted and so I, w I wasn't having to bend over too far to paint on it um so you could you could just do that that's fine um what else um I want to talk a little bit more about paint just because there's so many different kinds and brands and what do you, how do you know what you're going to like? Well, if you're just starting out, you don't know what you're going to like. Um, so, um, a lot of you probably have seen, like, paint that comes like this in a tube. Um, this, this is Artist Sloth. This is Michael's brand. Um, and you can get, um, a set of these little tubes. Um, there's different ones ranging from, like, maybe 10 colors all the way up to, like, I don't even know lots so I'll have some links for these down below as well um, these are quite a bit thicker than the stuff that comes in a bottle and maybe you would prefer that texture and that's fine um, but you can get a set of these these little guys to just try out um, for not a whole lot of money and um, I'll try to find some discount codes wherever I can to show you guys um, there's also this brand. It's actually called Cheap. Um, I get this at Craft Warehouse. Um, I don't know if they're a national chain or not, but um, I will put a link to this down below. They normally sell for $4.99, but I have never been in Craft Warehouse and these were not on sale. Um, so I was able to get it for $1.97. And this is a similar texture to this. It's a little bit thicker. Um, I do like this brand. Um, and so I'll link that down below as well. And if you ever go to like a craft store, art supply store, you're going to see a huge, you know, vast array of different types of even just acrylic paint. There's, and you'll see it labeled like, oh, um, beginner, intermediate, like professional level. And it can go up to like 15, 20 bucks for a tube of paint. And... I've never spent that much money on paint. I've always gotten the cheap stuff and been happy with it. I do want to do a video kind of comparing different brands and different um, like grades of paint just to see what the difference is. Um, but if you're just getting started, don't, don't even worry about any of that. Just get a little something to try it out. Um, so I'm going to have tons of links for you down below of... Um, all of this stuff that I've talked about and then I hope that that is helpful to people if you have any further questions about this leave them down in the comments below and um, I will be planning another um, painting tutorial um, pretty soon I just got to decide what to paint um, and I will have a link below as well to the so 
the first and so far only um, painting tutorial that I've done. I did a pumpkin for the fall. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it for now. Um, let me know if you have questions, suggestions, other things that you would like to see, leave a comment down below and I will take all of those to heart and do as much as I can. I hope you guys all had a lovely holiday season, happy new year, and I have so much planned coming up soon in the next few months. So I really hope you guys subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my videos and I will see you in the next one.